Greetings, D&D players, enthusiasts, and observers alike, and welcome back to Chronicles of Korea. My name is Emma, and I will be your DM today and every day that this wonderful campaign exists. As usual, let's go around the virtual table and reintroduce our players for this evening. Even though they are the same as they've always been, it's always good to be reminded. And with that, we're going to go to our favorite dad of the party, Jeremy, to start us off. Uh, and a little welding heater and, and a banging with the hammer. Oh, oh you're talking to me. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Damien, the resident dad and blacksmith of the party. Uh, and the the douche canoe who, um, who you know, plays me, his name's Jeremy. Very well put, Damien. Though, Jeremy's not that much of a douche canoe. But following the canoe line of thought, we're going to paddle on over to our next player, Nathan. Why, hello there. I am Nathan. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that one. It got away from me. Uh, yeah, I play Rubo, uh, Asimar, pain in the ass, uh, local fuckboy extraordinaire, uh, and, uh, I don't know, I'm a hunted, hunted man. A hunted man indeed. And we move on to the player of the character who stopped that hunting and was the only one to discover the assassin before. <laughs> Everything went down. Gia! Hi, I didn't see you there. My name's Gia. <laughs> I'm here playing Chatwin Darcy, a reborn sorcerer who hasn't had a good time in a while. Very fair. <laughs> but moving on from our resident heroine this evening to the goodest boy lizard that took one for the team in the form of a dog bite... And his player, Andrew. Yes, it is I, the goodest one, the purest one, the one that only has ever done good things as of its entirety. Andrew, playing the Elthu, the wonderful reborn lizard folk, cleric and druid of the stars, and yeah, ready to continue the trend of good. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. And we carry on the good trend by moving on to our next good boy, though he is also a pretty boy. And his player, Rosie. And just to clarify, Rosie is a girl, but whatever. Uh, I'm Rosie, and I play Aeon, a champion fighter from the city of Kriath. And um, I got to behead two dogs last time. Indeed you did. Uh, speaking of beheading dogs, let's get to the full recap of what happened last time. There were some bits and pieces sprinkled in, but last time... Our players took on a deadly assassin that was sent to kill Rubo that Chatwin discovered right before he was able to fully enter Rubo's quarters. Everyone stayed pretty fine thanks to Chatwin's early catch, aside from a couple scrapes and a stab wound uh, here and there. But once they had taken down the assassin, leaving him incapacitated rather than killing him completely, they searched his person and discovered that he had um, captured Aliana and shoved her in a jar where she was slowly suffocating and nearly died. <laughs> but now that they have her back, she has offered to lead them to this guy's hideout uh, where he was stowed away on the ship. And that is where we return to the party. So chat when you hogtied the... The dude and and everything before you guys took off. Is anyone else doing anything before you guys head off to this stowaway area? Yeah, Elon's never letting go of Valiana. <laughs> <laughs> just a hint of paranoia. I'm just gonna put one of those kid leashes on her. Uh, I'm I'm gonna ask Chat when. Uh, hey, uh, what else did you find on this guy besides this? And I hold up the little brooch. Oh, right. Um, I found the piece of paper and what else was it? There was a coin pouch with 50 gold in it, the blank piece of paper, and then there was the jar that Aliana was in. The jar, right. Um, I hold up the piece of paper and be like, there's definitely something to this. If, we, if we're able to take the time later, we should see if it has any sort of magic effect in it. Or we could like see if it's like... A traditional trick and like puts lemon on it or something i don't know what what is lemon going to do it's like it's a it's a little trick yeah, I, was, 
I was going to ask if I like knew any like tricks from my like rogue past to like decipher hidden messages on paper or something. Roll me a history check real quick. See what you remember. Okay. Ooh, that is an 18 on the die plus history is plus one. So 19. 19? Uh, with that, you would know that as far as pieces of paper, any blank piece of paper being held by some assassin or anything is not just going to be a blank piece of paper. Um, you know, there are a few tricks. Some of them were mainly to do with invisible ink. Some guilds that are more magic based have like arcanic ways of uh, making the text disappear, except for if someone knows how to sort of dispel the magic. Otherwise, there are other tricks such as like heat, water, but that's more usually on stone. If the invisible ink is used on stone than paper. And you know there are some tricks to do with food, but you're not necessarily sure if lemon is the way to go. Okay. They gotta have lemons on here. They're trying to fight scurvy off, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're trying to do some national treasure shit? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, I'll just ask Chatwin real quick. Uh, maybe try to warm your hand up and real quick and see if that just is the trick. Okay. Um, don't, don't burn the paper, please. I can I can control how much heat I put in my hand. It's okay. I'll take off my glove again and hand it to Rubo and put the piece of paper flat in my hand and just warm. Just I'll put it between the two of my hands and just warm them up just, just a bit so they're like little hand warmers, just a pleasant amount of heat. And then after a few seconds, I'll just kind of open up my hands and see if anything has appeared. And you open up your hands and where the handprints are, you do see that there is some text that has appeared. Oh, Rubo! <laughs> You're so smart! I, I've, I've decoded a couple messages in, in my time. Oh, okay, amazing. Here, I'll let you read it. Is there enough like that I can read basically the whole note, or does she need to warm it up for another second? There's still a bit missing, where you see kind of like the outline of her thumb and uh, a bit over like where her fingers are up near the top. I'm, I'm like trying to read it and I'm like uh, a, li- a little bit more over here. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 <laughs> and you warm it up and Rubo, you see it's less of a note and more of a list. And you start sort of like at the, the top and you see that a lot of names have already been crossed off of this list and nothing's looking familiar most of the way down. They look like names. Yes. They look like names. But as you get closer to the bottom of the list, you start seeing more familiar names. Quite a few that have been crossed off that are actually pretty concerning because they, they sound like some of the, the guys that you've worked with in the past that are part of Vasara's organization that you've done some jobs with. Interesting. And then you get to the bottom and you see that you remember the guy that warned you that someone was coming after you his name is on that list and it is crossed off and then the only names on the list that are not crossed off are yours and vasara's oh that's disappointing what Hmm? oh do you know who all these people are not all of them but there's some good people crossed off which i assume means dead and not so great person not crossed off, so still alive. And you have no idea why this assassin is after you. Your name is on the list with so many other people. <sighs> I mean, do I have an actual idea? No. Do I know that I've done some not-so-great things? Probably pissed a lot of people off, yes. I mean, I, don't, I, I could have I slept with his daughter. I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> um... Either way, it sounds like neither of us are going to have um, a very good time with the area we're going to. I'm a little bit worried why he has um, these these things with him, and I'm kind of like nudging one of the these nuts. <laughs> God, fucking! <laughs> no, I was wait. I was waiting for that, motherfucker. <laughs> and Elon nudges one of the dog's bodies. You said it had two heads, correct? Or nah? Yes, they they both had two heads. So yeah, that's unnatural, right? That that's that that's not normal, right? 
I don't know. I've seen a lot of weird things. I, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I've seen a lot of weird things recently. It's definitely possible. Yeah, we've, we've seen a lot. We literally talked to gods like a few days ago. Yeah, that's true. Two-headed dogs. Listen, I, I have been in one city all my life. I need to know if this is normal or not. Is this common somewhere? I have never seen anything like that. But then again, I've seen a lot of weird stuff recently. Okay, I will put that in my notes. Can I attempt nature to figure out if these things are common? Go ahead and make me a nature check, sir. Will do. All right. Plus six. That is a ten. <laughs> ten? <laughs> awesome. Um, You know you have never seen them before, but you're starting to find out throughout this journey that your forest that you grew up in is not necessarily the best, um, you know, baseline for what's normal and what's not. Yeah, he's, uh, Thaldu's just going to look over the dogs and just say nothing, because that is not a definite answer. <laughs> um, shall we check out his hiding place and then try our best to talk to him, um, see if he talks? If not, can we go with my original plan of just tossing him overboard? Are we still planning on, or I know that we mentioned before, talking to the captain? I don't know if we should, if we haven't decided. I would feel better also just talking to the captain to see what he thinks as well i mean this is his boat and if he finds out we you know caught someone and threw him overboard i'd be worried about getting to our destination all right i just don't want it to be like oh we have to pull over at the first port to kick him off or something like that because we don't have time for that i will explain your urgency to him i'll go talk to him okay Let's check out the hideout and then talk to him, see if he has anything to say when he wakes up, and then we'll talk to the captain. That sounds pretty fair. Aye, that sounds good. Can we just maybe let him go and he can move his way down the list? Would anybody be opposed to that? He would come after you pretty quickly because you're the closest one. <sighs> Fine. Well, perhaps we could... Um, is there a reason that you want him to kill the next person on the list? Yes. Well, I don't like the idea, but perhaps you we try to persuade him to go after that target first, then. I assume it is a good reason. Probably not. Oh, I may take back that then. <laughs> for me it is, but probably not for you. Rubo, bad people will get what's coming to them eventually. I don't know in what form, or if you will be the one to deliver it, but eventually... Someone down the line is going to fuck them up. I mean, I would say the gods will fuck them up, but uh, Rubo used to be a god technically, or an angel at least, so... <laughs> right, right. I'm sorry I rushed us out really quickly. We really haven't had a lot of time to <laughs> ponder that side of things. I just want to take a moment to apologize for drinking, because I want you guys to understand that none of this seems normal anymore, and uh, not safe yeah there were some revelations uh when we had those conversations can't blame you that was a very interesting time and f seeing gods uh, that was really cool i got to admit that right who's coming with me um is anyone going to stay with him to make sure he doesn't wake up suddenly and disappear i can watch him um uh, Chatwin, here's a rope, and I'm going to hand you 10 feet of rope. That way you can tie him up. Because Chatwin knows how to mommy tie, apparently. <laughs> Chatwin already hog-tied him. I have, I, I had some rope in my inventory. All right. This one's for a, this one's for a leash. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for suspending. The DM has no idea how the conversation went this way, but she is going to direct it away from this now. <laughs> As Aliana points you down the hallway to start heading towards... Elon's going to lead because he's holding Aliana and no one else is allowed to hold Aliana right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, Damien's going to follow Elon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just in case there's more dogs in there. And Rubo's the only one that's staying behind? I'm just saying I'm fine with that. I can just be the one to keep an eye on him. I'm also going to put on my armor as we start going. Okie doke. I'll probably be doing the same, like actually putting everything on. I am not. Because I'm just in pants. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. Hubba.
I need to really stop. Okay, so we go. <laughs> <laughs> we go, we go. Yes, you do. <laughs> Damn, I leave you guys uh, a month break and you all come back horny. <laughs> I don't. You need to not use the word all. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not in that group. Most of you come back horny. <laughs> Emma, you know me though. Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> anyway, Aliana sort of points you down towards the ladder that leads to the lower deck, which has all of the storage, like for supplies, etc. Not necessarily living quarters. So you all descend the ladder and find a multitude of boxes and crates and whatnot. And she points you guys behind a large uh, barrel of salted pork. And you find a couple loose, loose boards in the wall that lead to like a hollowed out space where there's like a very makeshift living space. Like there's essentially a bedroll. They've pulled in some, like, hay from where there was some stored for the horses. And uh, he's put that sort of uh, on the floor under the bedroll. And other than that, he's got, like, a little lantern that is not lit at the moment. But there don't seem to be any other possessions in there. I'm going to just do a deep dive investigation into this. Yeah, I was going to say, can we just make sure? Mm -hmm. What do we roll for that? Uh, investigation. Okay. That's what I'm good at. I like to just help someone so someone can roll with advantage. I have plus seven in my investigation. Yeah, I'm just gonna assist chat one just to, just because that's what Elon would do, but go ahead and assist chat one with advantage. I'd get a dirty 20 investigating around. I got a 25. Sweet. So both chat one and Damien start digging into stuff. You wouldn't find anything else. Aside from, like, tucked into the bedroll, you would find a a copy of the list. You would see it as another blank piece of paper, but if you heated it up again, which I assume Chatwin would immediately do. Yeah. You would see a copy of the list with, this time, if you heat the entire paper, you would see three more words sort of after the list mm-hmm. that just say, identity is sacred. Huh. Fold it up. Stick it in the pocket. Um, okay, I think that's, I'm certain that's all that's left in here. Um, we can, we can go back and make contact with, uh, Rubo. Are we wanting to alert the captain right now, like, go wake him up? I, I'm gonna wait till the morning, but definitely since there, it seems like there's, you know, definitely something that's, um, hidden on his own boat, it would be definitely good to talk to the captain. So I'll wait till at least first light. But um, I'm already awake. I'm going to stay up now. All right. Uh, Let's go back to Rubo and the um, assassin then. Sounds good. Alrighty. You guys go ahead and make your way back up to where Rubo is waiting outside of the room. Rubo, just as everyone's starting to walk back down the hall, you would kind of see him start to sort of stir. You would hear like a, a deep... Kind of come from him as he's starting to sort of like struggle in the in the bonds. I think I twirl my dagger really quickly and I get really close to him and put the dagger like right to his throat. And I'll just say quickly, who sent you? And he kind of looks up at you, gives a smirk, shakes his head. I like start to like slowly slide the like dagger into his throat, like just enough to like be like piercing the skin. And I'm like, who? Sent you. I roll intimidation. You may roll intimidation. Sweet. That is a 17 plus intimidation plus four. 21. You see as the dagger sort of pricks the skin, you see him kind of flinch a bit, but you said you got fully dressed and everything. So you're wearing your typical outfit. Yeah. You see his eyes sort of land on your chest where the brooch sits. And you see his jaw sort of clench and he shakes his head again. I, I like lean back from him and I toss holding the brooch that was in his pocket, like in my hand for a second. Like, yeah, 
shame if this went overboard. I'm like kind of tossing it up in the air and back into my hand. If I'm going overboard too, it doesn't matter, does it? Would we hear any of that? I uh, I, I was trying to do it quickly. I, I kind of back up against like the bed and lean against the bed and as they're like walking in. At that point, you guys would come to the, the door and see that he's awake. Looks like he's waking up, guys. Oh, well, good morning, sunshine. Does the captain know you're on board? Don't believe so. Don't think we're acquainted. I, I can figure we'll figure it out soon enough. Do you care to explain why you just decided to ambush us like that? Told you I'm not talking. Oh, well, that'd be fine. Do me a favor, chat one. Will you hold his face for me? I'll uh, go like, okay, and uh, step over him, grab onto his hair, and just lift him up by the head. Lift him up by the ponytail. Now, I don't like doing this, because this I've only ever seen it done, so I'm probably going to be really sloppy with it. But we really need answers from you, because I'd really like to know who's trying to kill my friends, okay? And then he's going to reach down into his bag and pull out the tongs he uses for uh, blacksmithing, clasp it onto a tooth, and be like, but this is probably going to hurt, yank back. Aelon immediately leaves the room. <laughs> Aelon's too hot oh, from that. I think the elder just yells out, is that really necessary? Uh I'd really like him to answer, and I don't know how to do no magic to get people to answer me, so... No matter what, it, he's still a person. Are we going to rely on that? That just seems, I don't know, wrong. I suppose that's fair. So do you just want to throw him overboard, then? I do. I... 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 If we want him to talk, maybe the uh, captain would be good, because the captain's actually kind of scary. You know, why don't we, cause I know you said, why don't we, you can just set him up here. I don't have to sleep. I can just sit here and stare at him all night, and if he tries anything, I'll just call out for you guys. And then, like you said, first light, we can get the captain, report him to the captain, and the captain can do with him as he will. If that's throw him overboard, so be it. That sounds good with me. I think that's a better way to do things. All right. Okay, so you didn't yank out the tooth, Damien? <laughs> nope. No, I would have clamped onto it, though. Okay. He would not have been looked phased at all. All right. Well, I'm going to go work on smithing and blow off some steam. Mm-hmm. I'll just drag him from the center of the room to go against the wall and look to everyone else. Um, I'm just going to sit in front of the door and stare at him all night long. Do you need anybody to switch out? No, I... I I I don't need to sleep. If I just sit still, I'll be fine. I'll be nearby. I'll hear you if you yell. Before Damien walks out and he says he's going to work on some smithing, I uh, toss him that brooch and I say, uh, melt this down while you're at it. I look at the guy. All right. His jaw definitely clenches, but... And I, I'm going to follow Damien out into the hall with once he has it. And then as soon as we're out in the hall, I... Uh, just kind of whisper. I'm like, don't actually melt it. And I <laughs> reach my hand out. I hand it back to him. I just post up. I sit cross-legged on the floor in front of the door. I level my eyes at him and I do not move for the rest of the night. And how I described the pupils in my eyes broke when I cast that spell, they never went back to normal. They've remained that way. And I just stare at him for the rest of the night, unmoving. She's gonna psychologically torture him. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's waterboard yeah. him next, why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> At first, he's trying to keep up the tough guy act, and he just kind of keeps eye contact with you. And then he kind of, you see, he sort of starts to notice the strangeness about your eyes. Also, probably the fact that Chatwin, like, probably doesn't move, right? Like, she's, like, undead. Like, she doesn't have to breathe. Like I don't, I don't need to move. I don't breathe. I don't nothing. I don't even have to blink. Unnervingly still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, like, he does crack after a few minutes and just go, are you, are you all right? Silent. And <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you see the realization kind of cross his face of, like, like this, like, is she dead? Oh, oh. And, like, he just kind of drops his head and is, like, <laughs> just goes from staring up at you like the cocky bravado is gone 
And he's just kind of staring at the floorboards now. <laughs> you see him start trying to mess with the ropes a couple times, but every every time he does, I just clap my hands. Yeah, and he doesn't like startle necessarily, but he does stop each time that you clap your hands at him, which would be about like three or four times during the night. Yes, that's all I do all night. <laughs> all right. Um, anyone else doing anything before they go back to sleep or um, whatever they're doing? Elon's not going back to sleep, but I'm probably like making a very secure bed for Aliana and I tell her to get some sleep. And she doesn't fight you in the slightest. She just kind of climbs into whatever little bed you've made her. I probably put her in like my hammock and stuff like that for the time being and. I um am just going to kind of stay in there and wait for light, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Brings her little leaf blanket and curls up. I tuck her in. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I give her what it, what she needs, but, you know, mm -hmm. I make sure she gets at least some sleep. Gotcha. Did anyone show me the note they found in the stowaway area? Oh, yeah. I would have given that to Rubo as well. Can I, like, take a look at that and see if it means anything to me um sure you can go ahead and make me another history check okay uh that's an 18 and i think mastery is one so i think it's a 19 history yeah 19 total all righty with the 19 you do remember this phrase but it was a while back one of your first like gigs with vasara Details are a little fuzzy, but you remember going to raid the home of a, a very wealthy woman whose name you don't necessarily remember, but you remember sort of like staking her out beforehand and you swear you heard her say to someone, identity is sacred at some point before you raided her home. The woman ended up dying trying to defend her home. But she was older, so she wasn't really. So, okay, more questions. That was I the one that killed her? No, one of the higher ups did. Okay, and then was this a job for Vasara? Yes, this would have been a job for Vasara, but she would have allowed you guys to all keep like a trinket from her jewelry collection, and that was what you had chosen. Okay, I think I just kind of uh, make my way somewhere private, and I'm kind of just holding both my brooch and this brooch and just kind of staring at him. And just kind of contemplating for the rest of the evening. Okay. Damien's going to go work on his tinkering and blacksmithing. Alrighty. What are you making, sir? I'm going to experiment around with infusion stuff. Okay. Start working on the spell rot tattoo, more or less. Gotcha. Alrighty. I don't know if... If you're just experimenting, I'm going to say you probably don't need a roll for that. But with that... I highly doubt Damien has the skill capacity to make a spell rot tattoo currently. So it's just mostly playing with the concept of imbuing magic into items. Gotcha. That's fair. But yeah. So with that, you all pass your evenings in various ways. And as the sun comes up, a few of you would be woken by the captain's voice just kind of echoing out. What the hell happened down here? Oh, shit. The dogs. Oh fuck! Oh yeah! I say that. I did just leave. Say that so. out loud. <laughs> uh, I'll just stand up, go over, grab the guy. I mean, to grab him by his ankle and drag him so his face is kind of dragging against the ground. <laughs> and he was sleeping, and you just hear kind of like a snort as he like wakes up and starts struggling in your grasp as you're dragging him across the floor. I just drag him out, uh, Captain. Yes. Found something. Plop. Uh, who the hell is this? Someone hiding on your ship. A stowaway, apparently. Yeah. As Elon comes out of the room and definitely closes the room behind the door behind him. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I'm not exactly too fond of stowaways. Yeah, you can throw him off the ship. Did he say what he wanted? Oh, he tried to kill one of us. Did he now? Mm -hmm. Everyone all right? Oh yeah, we're all fine. I got stabbed. <laughs> a few uh, injuries from the dogs and him. Yeah. He kind of looks, looks down at him. Must not be good at his job if he was trying to kill you. He's pretty shit at it. Try asking him questions. Yeah, nothing. I think he's, 
he seems um, a professional at this, it's, so it seems like this kind of work, he's used to it, so he's used to not giving out answers. Huh. Elon whispers to the captain, I don't know, you're pretty, you're, you're a lot more scary than us, so if you want to take a crack at it. He kind of raises an eyebrow, smirks a little. I can always try. We've got a holding cell, so. Oh, perfect. Oh, well, um, he kind of scoops him up. Just by, like, where you hogtied him. Sort of almost, like, throws him over his shoulder. <laughs> I can take him down to the holding cell, see if I can get anything out of him. And the guy just goes, you won't. And the captain laughs and is like, that's what they all say. <laughs> and starts walking with him. And somebody clean up the dog corpses off my deck, please. Right, sorry, sorry. I'll... Yes, sir. Elon, can you help me? <laughs> uh, yeah. And Ruba, are you like in the hallway or where are you? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I just kind of said I found a quiet place. So maybe I'm at the, like the end of the hall. <laughs> you would have been able to find an empty room pretty easily. Oh. Elon's room is at the end of the hall. So unless you were staying in Elon's room, you could probably take the door, the room next door, though. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we like this? Uh, yeah, probably the, probably the room next to it. Okay. So yeah, you would still be in there unless you, uh, at the captain's yelling, would have come outside. I think like at the end, tail end of it, I like peek out and uh, see them kind of doing what they're doing. Gotcha. Grabbing dead dog bodies. <laughs> Put one over my shoulder. Then again, it's not my first. It's not my first dead body to hold. Apparently, in this campaign, Thelthu, can you? Is Thelthu out here? <laughs> yeah, he's there. I was gonna. I was gonna ask. Uh, I mean, he'll help with the corpses if need be. But I was gonna ask if there was a bucket of like a bucket and mop <laughs> to clean the blood. Oh, there absolutely is. <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, you would be able to pretty easily find a bucket and mop. Uh, one of the crew would direct you to one. Well, if if the heads are needed to be disposed, he'll do that. And then go to the bucket in the mob, because he's real good at cleaning decks. <laughs> oh my god, he forgot! <laughs> what was that, like, episode, episode three? He <laughs> rolls, like, a 20 for the deck. Oh, yeah! That that was his... Yep. Yeah, wow! <laughs> that was his intro session. Oh my god. <laughs> All the callbacks tonight. <laughs> Me and Elon yeet these dog bodies off the ship <laughs> and you guys toss them into the water uh where they slowly sink but and a dragon turtle nom nom noms oh shit <laughs> i'm sorry i'm gonna keep going <laughs> oh god you guys would be able to see some movement in the water <laughs> <laughs> but cutting back to Thelthu. Thelthu, what did i have you roll to swab the deck last time Oh gosh, I don't remember. Uh, it was a long time dexterity? ago. Dexterity. I want to say dex because I because the ship moves. I was like, keeping balance, yes. something like that. Oh yeah, it was dex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just go ahead and make me a dex check to yeah, keep your balance just... while you are swabbing the deck. Good. Uh, that'll just be a flat roll because I have no dex. I'm going to double check really quick. Oop. There it is. Uh, yeah, flat roll. I will add the reborns d6. This is what you're using it for? I, you get three. Uh, so it's nine plus two for eleven. Alrighty. It's not your best work, but it's it's decent enough as you. Can we all roll? <laughs> You're all helping. I, I'm sorry. I wouldn't know what to do. I grew up incredibly wealthy. We had maids. Rubo is not helping. Rubo's like, what's is, what you call that? A, a mop? <laughs> That's a mop, yep. Uh, that's apparently what they call them on ships. It, it's not that hard. Listen, I know I was born in a noble family, but I at least know what a mop is. N no one else except for Thelthu? No. Okay. I I know what a mop is. I just didn't have to use them. Dam yeah, fuck, Damien's busy. Fuck. Damien, do you know what a mop is? Of course I know what a mop is. I lived alone for a long fucking time. Why? Comes out in like blacksmith trousers and shit with like covered in soot. No reason. We just have a we just have a thing going. We're just taking a poll. Oh, are 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 we clean? Are we cleaning up? We're cleaning up the bodies. 
Rubo's like hunched over inspecting the mop. <laughs> He's like, this is cool. They use this to clean things? Rubo, grab a mop. <laughs> I, I pick up the mop from the bottom. <laughs> you pick the squishy part up? The mop part up? This doesn't seem efficient. Just do what I do. I'm going to come out and help. Okay. You're getting rid of the blood, not spreading it around. With that, uh, make me another check at advantage. Felt do. Oh my god, yes. Already. If Damien's going to help. Do anyone else need to make a check? It's a 19. All right, with a 19, um, you're definitely, the second go around is much better, and you're able to get all the blood off the floor. See, it's not too hard. We live for natural 20s on cleaning. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, uh, thanks to Damien, you're able to finish the job pretty quickly. Just flabbergasted that people don't know what a mop is. (laughs) I know. (laughs) But regardless, with that, the captain would come by at some point to check on, like, your job. Give the all clear as far as all the blood has been swept up uh, and confirm that the the prisoners in the holding cell being watched to make sure that nothing happens. But with that, you guys have two more full days on the ship. So is there... Anything that anyone would particularly like to do within those two days. Damien will once again continue working on the inscription of magic. Alrighty. And I will leave it up to the DM when he figures out how to do a tattoo out of magic. Okay. Can you send me that again really quickly? Because I know you... It's essentially a tattoo that I can... It allows me to summon a familiar. Okay. Or to put any cantrip or first level spell into. So like tensors, I told you the spells that I would probably be using for it are like unseen servant, tensors, floating diff, uh, disc, produce flame, and f- find familiar. All things I can use in blacksmithing. Oh, that's right. I know you had sent this to me at some point. Uh, oh, you actually can't. Hmm? I'm looking at it, and it says that it's. Um, I know the rarity varies. From what I'm looking at, you need a special type of needle to do it. Is what it's saying. At the very least, if it's considered a tool, an artificer, I think, has an ability at a certain level that allows you to create any tool. Give Granted, if you have artificer's tools, I believe, or something like that. Yeah, I have the any tool for the job ability. Okay, gotcha. Sorry, I was just trying to look over everything really quickly, and it made it sound like the needle was the magic item, not the tattoo itself. So that was where I was confused. Sorry. But no, it does look like the tattoo is the item and not the needle. I'm going to say that by the second day, you would be able to, like, it it would be, like, way later in the day, like, when the sun is setting, but you would probably be able to figure it out by then. Oh, if that's the case, then I'm going to stumble across the the summon familiar tattoo, and I'm just going to go sprinting into Chatwin's room holding a cat and be like, Chatwin! Yeah! <laughs> Chatwin, this came out of a tattoo. What the fuck? And it's gonna it's gonna be a little cat with wings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a meow. <laughs> that was me. Um, but chat when you would hear the meow, Damien in your head you would hear Hello other human? The cat sounds very confused as to why you're so excited. <laughs> oh, you uh you you did that. Yeah, I was practicing with, like, you know how I did, like, your claws and the ring? Mm-hmm. I was practicing like that. And then uh, th- th- this came out. Oh, uh, that's that's fantastic. I can't I can't even do that, so... Hey, good job. What do I do with it? Uh, you... Well, now you have a pet, it looks like. A magical one at that. I have a pet? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Hello there, little kitty. Scratches its belly. Hello? Do you have a name? I don't know. Did you give me one? But I got horrible naming since. My last cat I just called Stray because it just kept showing up at the house. You see its eyebrow raised. It's like, well, I'm a bit different because I have wings, but I would prefer not to be called wing or feather or anything simple like that. Oh, Flutter? Is it a girl? Yeah, I I think it's a girl. 
chat one. I, it, I need a name for it. And it's talking to me. It says it would rather not be called Wing or something. I pick up its tail and try to look and see if it's a boy or a girl cat. <laughs> it, it is a girl cat. Fruit. Sorry. I need to go over and give her a pet. She purrs. What, what about Claudia? Claudia. I actually like that a lot. I like Claudia. What about you, Kitty? You like the name Claudia? It has a certain ring to it. <laughs> Claudia will do. Can can you help me carry things? Or like, maybe help me with my blacksmithing? You're magical, right? Like, can you like blow things up? No, I can't blow things up. And I'm certainly not a pack mule, but I can bring you things as needed. Also, you can be like my little helper. Oh, I don't have any cat food that is like salted meat, all right? That will do. But we'll have to work on finding better things. It appears you don't know how to take care of, ca- care of cats very well. I honestly wasn't expecting you to pop out of a little design either. Well, then we'll have to rectify any of these issues when we get the moment, won't we? Chat when she sounds like she's some sort of like noble princess. She's very prissy. I mean, I can't hear her, but from what I can tell, just that cat looks like it's sassing you. All right. I mean, Claudia uh, seems a very sassy kitty, but honestly, she's uh, she also just looks very regal at the same time. I like, honestly, <laughs> she she seems a very good cat. Awesome. All right, Claudia, this is Chatwin. Uh, that's Rubo. Rubo's kind of like an adopted son at this point. Understood. Nice to meet you both. I just kind of wave. <laughs> There's also Elon and Delphi. Oh, I'll go introduce you. She's <laughs> gonna <laughs> go off and find the other two. I assume Delphi's probably on deck. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say he's probably on deck, just looking out across the water. Or what time was it? It was evening, you said. Yes, this would be evening on the second day. I w- I will be jumping back for everyone mm-hmm. else who wants to do stuff. But so he's probably more looking at the sunset or night sky. Okay. I'll approach the Elfu and be like. The Elthu, are you awake? Yes. I, even if I wasn't, I'd still be a bit. Yes. <laughs> well, let me introduce you to our new friend. This is Claudia. I'm going to put her down in front of her. This tiny cat. He's just going to like look down. Where did it come from? Out of a tattoo. That's crazy, right? Um, Sounds like magic. Well, yeah, I've been working with uh, Chatwin on, like, magic things, and uh, I found that I can, like, inscribe. Uh, it doesn't work, like, 90% of the time, but sometimes it does. Uh, and this, this is the result of a couple of days of hard work. Will it be all right if another assassin comes or something else happens? Oh, that's a really good point. I'm going to look at Claudia and be like, are you able to hide if, like, someone tries to kill us? I mean... <laughs> she could go to a pocket dimension if she wanted to. Yes. I have my ways of protecting myself. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, she says she can protect herself. Well, that's good. Well, I suppose welcome to the group then. Thank you, lizard person. She she says, thank you, lizard person. I, I don't know if you can hear her. Chatwin couldn't hear her. No, I don't think I can unless I focus on it. Hmm. Do you know where Aelon's hiding at? Uh... No, I, I can't say I've been paying too much attention. Um. <laughs> I, 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 I'll go try to find him. Thank you. Of course. Elon is not hard to find. He's in his room swinging. He's probably spent most of the day like in his hammock, and probably talking with Aliana, and at the end of the day, I'm just relaxing. Just going to go in and be like, hey, Elon. Oh, Aliana, too. Um, This is Claudia. Holds up the cat. Hello. Oh, great. Another pet. I I mean, she just kind of like appeared while I was practicing doing the magic stuff. We already got horses. But sure, what's another? I mean, she's not like a horse. She's she's a cat. You never never had a cat? Mm, No. Oh, well, then I suppose that you'll have to learn about them. Well, uh, I'm glad you have a new pet then. (laughs) And Aliana's going to kind of look up at you, Elon, and kind of lean over and just be like, that thing's not going to eat me, is it? I double look the cat. The cat narrows its eyes at you. Please don't eat Aliana. 
You mean mugging this cat? <laughs> yeah, mean mugging this cat. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't eat the fae. No offense, I know. I know back in the day when Kriaf was being built, they ate whatever they could. Ah, please don't eat my friend. No, she she said she's not going to eat the fair. Good. Well, welcome aboard the uh, crew. I uh, guess cat. Wait, hold on. You can understand it? What the? Yeah, yeah she just like talks in my head. Great. All, all you've heard is meowing. <laughs> you've been hanging around chat one a lot, huh? Yeah, uh, well, since I can do the magic thing, I figured chat would help me figure out how to do it. Uh, okay, it's magic. Got it, got it, got it. Yep, um, welcome aboard. Hey, actually, Damien, I, I gotta... Actually, hold on. Emma, I have a question, if I ask this or not. Yes. Does my armor have the Kreef symbol anywhere on it? Um, it would, Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do my stuff since Damien's already in here. And I'm going to be like, by the way, Damien, can I ask a favor? Uh, yeah, whatever you need. It's kind of important. Um, I get up and grab my armor that's like kind of on the ground. And I show him the like insignia. And I'm like, can you take this off? I mean, yeah, that, that shouldn't be too difficult. Just a bit of raising, heating up and reshaping. Do you think you can... Do it before, you know, we um, launch a full-out attack, I guess, against whoever, you know, Chatwin's having us go against. Uh, I'd have probably have to stay up all night, but yeah, I could get it done. I just don't want, for any reason, them to recognize it. I mean, I doubt they'll recognize it, but I don't want them to see it as, you know, um, my home is attacking them and cause more issues. That's all. Yeah, no problem. I'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll put it in your room, I guess. Um, and then I'm out of money, but I'll I'll pay you back when I get a chance. Nah, don't worry about it. Thank you. I got it. Well, appreciate it. Uh, so I'll, Elon will take that to his room at some point. But other than that, uh, I mean, he works during the day on a boat and lounges at night. Fair enough. So, Damien, question. You said you would stay up to do the armor then correct yeah so he's probably gonna be exhausted yes so we're gonna go back to the first night really quickly since we kind of jumped ahead a bit yeah sorry i was in a moment and i'm like wait a minute hold on no you're good would it be better if i just asked him that first night no you're fine i mean if you would like to ask him the first night you absolutely can but um i mean we've already done it let's not wreck on it but I am going to go back to the first night. Thank you. Damien, as you're sleeping, roll me a wisdom save real quick. I don't like that. That's a 12. A 12? Okay. You're sleeping peacefully. No dreams, really. And then all of a sudden you hear this, this voice kind of creep into your head that sounds very familiar as it kind of goes, Damien? Darling, can you hear me? Damien, uh, uh, lo love, is that you? Damien, yes. Uh, and the voice starts to get fainter, and then you hear it, like, like a couple more times, like Damien, can you hear me? Love, uh, fuck. And then <laughs> it does not come back. <laughs> I re I really don't like that. He's gonna be a fucking hot mess that day. I thought I was over this nightmare shit. And then if you stay up the second night, then it doesn't really return. All right. But uh, what's everybody else up to? Mine is very, very simple. I'm not doing anything, anything fancy. I basically am just locking myself in my room again for the final two days. Not a peep from Chatwin for the next two days. Unless somebody interacts with her first, like Damien does on the second day. And then it's right back to, okay, I'm closing my door and I'm not speaking to anyone. And... By the time it's, like, time to go, by the time Chatwin leaves, nobody sees it, but the blackened fingers are there, but I'm wearing my gloves over it. The blown pupils are still there, and the white going through my hair, there's more white streaks. Like, a lot more. So there's a lot more white in my hair. Okay. But that's it. I would like to make my way on that first night down to the 
brig. Okay. By myself. You do so? There's a guard standing by? Yes. One of the crew members would kind of just be like leaning against the wall, arms crossed, staring at this dude. Kind of looks up as you come by. Who's there? Rubo. Oh, um, hello. Can I have a minute alone with this guy? Kind of narrows his eyes, but nods. I, I don't have a key to let him out or anything, so. It's fine. Hold if you need me. Starts walking down past you. As soon as I, like, sit there for a second, I make sure he's fully walked away. I, uh, walk up to the bars and I just take a seat on the ground next to the bars. And kind of lean back against the side of the boat. And... <sighs> We're still not talking. No. Do hmm. you know how I got this? And I pull the brooch off my kind of overcoat. Kind of shakes his head. You don't know. Don't know the whole story. Know enough. And I pull out that piece of paper that has the names on it. Some of these people are good people. Maybe they were. Not really many of them left. But not good to me. Assuming you have something to do with that old woman. Who I got this brooch from. I might. Interesting. I uh, slide the like list into the cell. And I'll say, why haven't you taken care of the root of the problem? The only name after mine. You are the root of the problem. I'm the root of the problem. <laughs> Interesting. She might have ordered that job. You're the one who decided to take our... And he kind of stops himself. You wear something that doesn't belong to you. Without knowing what it is or what weight it carries. Identity is sacred and you've taken the wrong identity. I'm sure you heard her say that at some point. Possibly. <laughs> well... It doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to me. <laughs> Good luck with that. If you keep it like you have it, I'm not going to be the only one that tries to kill you. You know that, right? You're not the first, and I'm positive you won't be the last. So yourself. Who sent you? The old woman's dead. You're not going to tell me? Someone who deserves the gold pin. <laughs> who didn't steal it. I think I uh, go to cast light in my hand. And you see, like, the brooch, like, kind of glow as I've kind of, like, focused it as my holy symbol and say, uh, I think it's a little bonded to me at this point. And he sees the, like, brooch glow as my hand starts to glow. You see no change in his face. If anything, his jaws clenched harder. Well, is there anything I can do to convince you to give me a name of someone to talk to about this situation that I'd be willing to have a conversation instead of straight to a fight? No one is going to want to have a conversation. Not after what you've done to that. How you've smeared it. Just good luck avoiding the ones that are better than me. Can I pick the lock to the rig thing? Roll a uh, thief's tools check. Dex and proficiency. Uh, that's a 19. Easily. Cool. Is he, he's still hogtied in here? He's not hogtied anymore, but they have like metal chains that are fastened to the wall that they've transferred him into. Uh, I'm going to walk in and I'm going to slit his throat. Okay. He drops. And then I unfasten the... Uh, can I try to pick the locks on his, like, cuffs? You can. Like, to remove them? That's another thief's tools check. That is a... What was that? Add to that again. It's... Uh, so that's a 21. Yep. Easily. Uh, and then I would like to uh, stage it like we got in a fight. And I'm going to, like, take one of my daggers and stab myself in the stomach. Roll damage on yourself. Cool. That's not too much at all. Totally fine. Five points of damage. Easily acceptable. Mm hmm And uh, do, do I make any kind of roll to, like, stage it like we were in a fight? That, I'm going to say, is a... Like, deception? Um, I wouldn't say deception. Deception would be the telling him the story, but I'd say performance will work. That's good for me also. That is a 15 plus 7. 22? 22 is pretty good. I'd say that um, you managed to, with that stab, and you're able to put the knife back in his hand and give yourself enough time to sort of like cry out in pain make it look like you 
like very quickly retaliated. Cool. And then I, I just start screaming, help, help, help. And the guy runs back and is like, what the hell? I thought you said you didn't have the key. I, I didn't have the key. I, I don't know what you've been doing. This He picked his own locks. He's, this man's an assassin stowed away on your ship. You don't think that he has the talent to get out of shackles? Uh, look, man, we don't deal with assassins. We deal with thieves. I'm like holding my like stomach as it's bleeding. I'm like, ah, I've got to go talk to your captain. Just ah, keep an eye on this mess. Oh, all right. Uh, oh, he, he's dead. What do I need to keep an eye on as you kind of I'm just walking away. <laughs> yeah. And I go speak to the captain and I uh, explain that w- when I was talking to him, I asked for a minute alone to speak to him to see if he'd give me any information. And uh, he had freed himself from his cups and cuffs and drew a dagger off of my belt. And we got into an altercation and I uh, used the best means of my abilities and ended up uh, taking his life. All right, roll me a deception check, sir. Perfect. That is also very good. That is a 16 plus deception is plus 7. Math, 24? No, 23? 23. Damn. Captain rolled 21, but that's still gonna... <laughs> and I like, I, you know, selling the story, I like move my hand off of like my stomach and it's just like bleeding. Mm-hmm. And he would immediately like get you bandages. He has uh, first aid supplies. As as he like first uh, uses his like first aid skills on me. Once it's like wrapped, I just like place my hand over it like it's hurting. But I'll lay on hands myself and kill myself back up to full. Okay. It's like five points. So I just just kind of like subtly just take care of the issue. Yeah, and he'll kind of look at you and be like, "Well, I'm sorry that my um my god didn't do his job properly." No, um, don't blame him. He He's right. You guys don't deal with assassins, and uh, this man seems to have come here to kill me. And I'm sorry that I brought that trouble onto your ship. Well, I appreciate it, but looks like it's over now, so hopefully you have nothing to worry about once we hit the shore. Yeah. I'm going to get some sleep. Yeah, you do that. And I head to Chatwin's room. <laughs> Alrighty, chat when the door slides open and why well, knock first? I don't. I don't walk into Chatwin's room. Okay, I'm just sitting in the dark. Uh, when I hear the knock, I just you just kind of kind of hear a <clears throat> nah, come in. Um, that uh, assassin's dead. Oh, I think we're in for more trouble than I was prepared for when we get back to the dunes. Not just your trouble. Yeah, let's. Um, I'm going to get my family out, and then I think it. Would be a good idea if we didn't stick around. Yeah. I just close the door and leave Chatwin alone. And I go to Damien. <laughs> I, I'll go to progressively tell everyone what happened with that, with whatever means they want to ask. Like, Rubo can't just, like, not tell them it happened. That's fair. Damien's in his workshop, and I come in. And uh, well, this is the first night, so I guess he's not... You were in your workshop till you went to bed, I'm assuming, right? Yep. I, uh... uh Hey, I, I know you're busy, but... Um, oh, not at all. Come on in. I got into a bit of a fight with that assassin. I went down to talk to him. and Wait, what? Are you all right? Uh, and I I've still have the, like, the bandage on my like abdomen, and I'm like, I, I'm fine now. But, uh, he didn't make it. I I didn't mean to be so lethal. It just kind of happened that way. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, let me look at it. Uh, I, I, I healed it up already. It's, not, it's doing a bit better now. Okay, well, if... If you need any help or or anything, just let me know, all right? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that, unfortunately, we're not going to get anything out, more out of him. I was trying to see if I could get anything. I, I, I do think it has something to do with an old job, that, that piece of paper you found on it with the identity is sacred thing. I just, I don't, I have to make some contact with a few people, well, whoever's left after that list, but and see if... See if I can find anything out, because he he didn't seem to want to give it up. All right, you you let me know if you need anything, okay? Anything I can do to help, uh, dig up information or something. They don't know me, so maybe I'd be better for that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. You sure you're all right? Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. And I like go to close his door, and I just say thanks, Dad, and I just walk out. I'm like, 
<laughs> Rubo and Barris in the hallway, like, <laughs> just, just out of. How dare you lie to your father? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, and I will go, I guess, uh, to Theolfu next. Yeah, he's probably, like, my thing for the trees is he's probably just spending time on the deck of the ship, so you, you'll find him there. <laughs> yeah. I uh, come up and I'm like, I uh, had to kill that assassin. We, we got into a little bit of an altercation. Oh, how did that happen? I thought he was locked away somewhere. Well, apparently the ship hands don't deal with assassins very often, and he freed himself from his shackles. I suppose that's to be expected. Um, all right, I suppose we weren't getting any out of, anything out of him anyway. A shame, though. I mean, yes, he was trying to kill you, but it, I don't know. I just feel there may have been another way or something else we could have done. Well, unfortunately, there's only so much you can do when you're in my line of work. I suppose. Right. Are you still in that line of work now? I don't know, actually. I guess so, technically, but... Perhaps it may be best to think about leaving it. Lest you end up like him, I suppose. Yeah, well, we'll do what I can. Sometimes things don't let you go. <laughs> I, I understand that. The stars look great tonight. They never cease to. All right. I've been letting everyone know. I gotta go let Elon know. All right. And I head to Elon next. All right. You end up in Elon's room. I, uh, I knock on the door and uh, it's Rubo. It's Rubo. Yep. Come in. He's like stretching, getting out of the hammock a little bit. Rubo's blushing. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, I. Yeah. What's up? I, I, I got in a bit of a fight with that assassin and. What the fuck? I guess the ship hands aren't really good at keeping an eye on somebody picking shackles. He stands up from the hammock and like rolls his sleeves up. You want me to go beat him up for you? Well, I I won that fight. He's uh, not with us anymore. Well, fuck. Okay. He he got me a little bit. I like kind of pull my shirt up to show the like bandage on my stomach. Mm. But... Yeah, I don't know. Did this, did this captain, the captain kind of wrap me up? Did he do a good job? Maybe you could help me put a f- clean bandage on. I guess I'm going to inspect it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would inspect it, and the captain did a very clean job with it. He did fine. He knows what he's doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he, yeah, he's <laughs> definitely, uh, if I, I, I'm really bad at wrapping wounds, maybe, uh, you could just help me change it and tomorrow for what fresh band-aids is and all. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. You okay, Rubo? I know that man was after you. I know you've been kind of a little bit off since he got here. <sighs> That's it's less him and more that list. I guess if any of my acquaintances were going to be killed, it would be her that's still alive. You did make an offhand comment about that we could just let him go and finish the list. Do you not like her? Oh, well, not anymore. Why? If it's okay to ask, anyways. <sighs> he kind of just like pull. Obviously, is there like a little chair or something? Like, can pull up a little chair? A little stool, yeah. <laughs> there would be a little like stool in the corner. Yeah, he pulls up the little stool, and he's like, uh, "Well, I used to work for her, um, and work. I assumed." was all that was until it wasn't work anymore and it was romance and eventually heartbreak and heartbreak's a little hard to get over well i can't say that i've been in love or anything like that before but i don't like my family but i wouldn't i wouldn't want that for them i would rather they get off their ass and actually live an honor honorable life but i'm the one out here living a good life they're not yeah try to see it that way if you can then i think the hard part is that i was more surprised to see her name even on that list and not find out that i was that she had sent this man after me i mean she could have planned it that way who knows 
I, I mean, I don't know how things work, but there's always a plot and some crazy theory behind it. Everybody covering their own butts. It, I didn't really get my hands into it because I was basically a nobody at home. But if they're capable of that in Kriath, I can only imagine wherever you've been and traveled and met these people that they're capable of it as well. But as long as you're happy what you're doing now, like if you ever need help, I guess, from a crazy ex, just let us know. I think you guys are helping a lot. You guys are helping a lot also. And now we have to help Chatwin and her, oh God, like a tiny revolution we're about to have. Well, it's not the first revolution I tried to help Chatwin with, so. <laughs> How smooth did the first one go? We did kind of get chased out of town, but it was more like we decided to leave at the same time. Mm. So good, but also not good for yourself. Got it. I will prepare. At least we're experienced this time. Okay. Yeah, if you ever need anything, I'm here. The others are here too, and I'm sure Damien mostly is going to say, of course, anything you need, come to me. Well, just maybe don't mention the Vassar stuff to anybody else quite yet. Mm, your secret's fine. Yeah. Well, if um, you ever want to do some work on up above in the day, let me know. Like, I'm sure the captain doesn't mind. He's letting me help around if you want to take your mind off of something. Or if you want to go around and, I don't know, swing a sword or something. Whatever helps. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's all I'm good for. You're good for a lot more than that, Aelon. I promise you that. I'm trying. Go get some rest or hell. Me and Aliana were chatting away, so if you need anything, we're here. Right, Aliana? Right. I'll I'll be here for a bit. No more exploring for me. This scared all of us shit. Kind of chuckle. Uh, and then I think I just give Aelon a big hug. Oh, oh. And then awkwardly turn and walk out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like that big oof. And like, oh, um, <clears throat> yeah. All right, uh, yeah, la later? <laughs> like as he's just already walking away like okay all right and with that Delta, you said you're gonna spend the entire two days above yeah probably just hanging around spending time above deck really meditating and reflecting on what he was told to him and the, its implications and what choices he may need to make later down the line okay and as you're as you're meditating and reflecting at some point, you would get that sort of feeling in the back of your head that you used to get when you would get memories before you remembered everything. And a very familiar voice would come through saying, things are not as they seem. Be cautious. And then it would disappear. Noted. <laughs> and unless there is anything else that anyone would like to do. Before we end, I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I think I'm good. Perfect. I took a lot longer than that. Just like everyone was doing their own thing. So I was like, well, I want to give everyone a chance to question Rubo if they need. That is fair. But questions aside, thank you all so much for listening this evening. If you liked us and want to hear more, please be sure to subscribe to our podcast or follow us on social media for some fun extras. We are Chronicles of Kriath Pod on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. All one word, all lowercase. And we now have a Patreon too. So if you want even more extras than you get for free, you can pay a little monthly fee and get some fun bonus content. And... Yeah, thank you all again so much for listening. We do really appreciate you guys, and we will see you next time. Bye. 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 Goodbye, everyone. Bye.